The race cars and drivers began arriving in Dallas today, but it will be weeks before the economic impact of the Grand Prix will be totaled up. The predictions are robust. Race promoters have spent more than $5 million on improvements. That includes a million dollars on paving the track and a million and a half on walls and fencing. Millions more are going for seating, including these tents, which are known as the Texas Suites. This is the Rio de Janeiro Pavilion. There'll be eight suites in this pavilion, and it'll be air-conditioned. Each one of those suites costs twenty dollars to $25,000, and they'll have full-time food and waiter service. Building and staffing them creates jobs. Race officials say more than 3,000 part-time jobs are being generated by the race. We project that it'll inject at least $20 million of new revenue into the city of Dallas and, and the area because you have about 15 to 20,000 visitors from outside the city and five or 10,000 visitors from outside the country who will be descending on Dallas over the next few days and that generates a lot of new revenue. Convention visitors to Dallas spend an average of $150 a day according to the Dallas Chamber of Commerce. Using those numbers, just 10,000 visitors could be expected to spend nearly $5 million over a three-day race. The critical factor, of course, will be how many people show up. Promoters say ticket sales are meeting their projections. And they point to Detroit, which began its Grand Prix three years ago and watched its paid attendance increase by 40 percent. Their race is now termed a success, perhaps the only category these days in which Dallas wants to be like Detroit. Byron Harris, Channel 8 News. The Detroit Grand Prix opened with a bang, the banging of race cars off a wall and off each other. Fortunately, no one was hurt. As the drivers maneuvered through the Fair Park course today, the medical team was getting ready for the action. On race day, 21 doctors, 20 nurses, and 21 paramedics will be on duty. We have to have the trackside physicians and paramedics and extrication equipment in time to get to an accident scene and take care of an uh, injured driver, as you mentioned, within 30 to 90 seconds. We have to have a helicopter standing by at all times. And we have to have this medical central uh, set up for the health care that might need to be provided. Med 1 or Med 2, this is Med Central. Do you copy? We're only going to provide initial stabilization, uh, not any real extensive treatment at this site, but rather try to get them as rapidly as possible to a hospital. Medical Central is the nerve center for the entire medical system. The facility is really a mobile emergency room, and it's ready for anything that comes along. All I need to do is soak in some um, alcohol. No, ammonia is better. In three days of racing at the Detroit Grand Prix, 450 spectators needed some form of medical attention. If you're going to be a spectator at this weekend's Dallas Grand Prix, be prepared for two things, a lot of noise and the heat. To protect yourself from heat injuries, wear a hat. Also wear light, cool clothing. Drink plenty of water, but not alcoholic beverages. And whenever possible, find some shade. If you get into trouble, first aid stations are available. Medical officials say they are ready, but they hope they won't have to become active participants in the action on the track. The Formula One cars were still going through their practice laps this morning. But not far from the track, just beyond these large white tents at the finish line, some other competitors were already into the real thing. Just leave them in there. Don't Just leave them right where they are. Why don't you get a wet, a damn towel and put them over and put over the top of it? This is the food team from Chow Catering, and it's racing against time. Chow is preparing meals for the Texas Sweet Tents. Lunch was a light meal, only 350 people. This is lunch, yeah. And then this will be broken down, and there's a cocktail party going on for 500 people at 3 o'clock. Getting to this point wasn't easy. The health department wouldn't allow food to be cooked at the track, so it's being prepared at the kitchen and hauled to Fair Park. After the final touches, the meals are stored in a refrigerator truck and then carried to the tents. Despite the extra work, Chow's vice president is pleased with the menu. Knowing that the international people were coming here, I wanted them to have Texas food. I didn't want them to come here and have food that they could get at home. Fried chicken, potato salad, baked beans. We did an American pic Texas picnic. Tomorrow I'm doing a southwestern menu with grilled chicken breast, chili, red chili pasta. These people are paying plenty for the flavorful food, service, and ambience at the suites. Two of the tents cost $25,000 each to reserve. The third costs $20,000. Tomorrow, 500 people will be served at each meal. If today's guests are an indication, those meals will be successes too.
Brad Watson, Channel 8 News. As the guests made their entrances at the door of the Neiman Marcus store downtown, they were greeted with gusto by the Kemper Military Academy Band of Boonville, Missouri. It was a veritable swarm of Rolls Royces, Mercedes, and limos, all bringing the beautiful people, the rich and powerful of Dallas, who wanted to rub elbows with the men who drive the fastest cars in the world. Right off, you could tell this was not the Saturday night stock car racing crowd. So let's do something cheap and superficial. The diamonds were dazzling. Guests nibbled on exotic cheeses and pate. Champagne flowed like Lone Star. Top drivers Alain Prost of France and Nicky Lauda of Austria enjoyed their first visit to the famed Dallas store. Nicky said, wrap it up. Matter of fact, I'll take two. Sports artist Leroy Neiman came. He designed the poster of the Dallas Grand Prix. One could hear snatches of French and German, and there were more than a few British accents. All of it was to honor the founders of the Grand Prix, Don and Carol Walker, and Larry and Linda Waldron. I think it is very much an international event, something that we have strived to also uh, bring to Dallas is, a, is the international sense of uh, the world's markets. And certainly the Grand Prix is uh, very much one of the great international events that could occur in any city. We can't thank all of you enough, and we're so proud to have had the opportunity to do something like this for this great city and this great state. Thank you very much. Thank you. And what, may you ask, does any of this have to do with pushing a machine 160 miles an hour across asphalt? Absolutely nothing or maybe absolutely everything. Bill Brown, Channel 8 News. Fair Park took on a different look today. 90 to 100,000 spectators lining a 2.4 mile Grand Prix circuit for this city's first ever Formula One race. Repairs to a faltering track caused a 10 minute delay. But once the race began, the brief inconvenience was soon forgotten. The race began without a hitch, but by the end of the two hour race, only eight of 25 cars would finish. Drawing almost as much attention was the parade of celebrities, ranging from a former president to stars of the TV show Dallas. It was easy to see that all the entertainers were having a great time. Well, sure, yeah. I mean, watch a bunch of cars go around in a circle is pretty exciting, I think. <sighs> and the energy was hot! <laughs> it was hot as cockpit temperatures soared to 140 degrees. Finland's Kiki Rosberg was both hot and tired when he crossed the finish line as the winner of the race. Nigel Mansell of England wasn't as fortunate as he collapsed trying to push his car to the finish line for extra points. In the end, though, the champagne flowed as one of the most competitive Formula One races in many years came to a close. George Reba, Channel 8 News. Rosalind and former President Carter arrived by jet to attend the Grand Prix race. The Carters were on their way back from Indianapolis in a visit with the number one Democratic presidential candidate, Walter Mondale. Mr. Carter offered his former top aide some advice about who to listen to when he chooses a running mate, particularly if that running mate is a woman. I think if it now people would keep their mouth shut, it would be better for the women's cause. The now people Mr. Carter are referring to are members of the National Organization for Women. And last weekend at their convention in Miami Beach, a woman vice president was the main topic. There are a number of women being mentioned as possible running mates for Walter Mondale these days, and Geraldine Ferraro seems to be mentioned the most. Earlier this week, Mondale had a three-hour interview with the New York Congresswoman, and she says she's eager for the job, but not eager enough to be part of any draft movement by her now supporters. Now delegates have voted to nominate Ferraro or another woman if Mondale doesn't, but according to Mr. Carter, they're not helping the women's cause. And I think if, if uh, Vice President Mondale does choose a woman, it'll be in spite of, of now rather than because of them. 
After talking with reporters, the Carters then moved on to Fair Park and the Grand Prix race. Mr. Carter knows firsthand how tough races can be, but in this race, as well as the presidential contest, the former president watches from the sidelines. Alice Killian, Channel 8 News.